Hey guys, before we get things started, I want to give a special shout out to World of Parks TV. They were some of the only creators on YouTube that I found high quality POVs of Movie Park Germany's attractions. It's a park that doesn't allow on-ride filming with GoPros, contrary to most of the parks in Europe, so it's really difficult to find high quality footage from that park. Without them, this video would have been very difficult to make, so I appreciate them providing most of the footage used in this video. Let's get straight into it. Movie Park Germany is a movie studio themed park located about 45 minutes outside of Dusseldorf. It's known for its immersive selection of rides and roller coasters, and in this video I want to count down my top 10 favorites that I had the chance to experience this past summer. As per usual, I aim to get on each of the park's roller coasters, of which Movie Park has 8, but I also got on many non-coaster attractions as well, which is why this is a ride list and not a coaster list. I had a few local German coaster enthusiasts with me who showed me around the park and got me on what they believe to be the park's best rides. Shout out to Tim, Robin, and Julian if you guys are watching, because without them, I probably would have missed a lot of the park's best stuff. Anyways, with that being said, let's get straight into it. These are my top 10 rides and attractions at Movie Park Germany. At number 10 is Ghost Chasers, our first entry onto the list, and it's a classic Mock Rides Wild Mouse coaster. Themed to SpongeBob, this Wild Mouse has a pretty tacky appearance to it in my opinion, and has some abrupt trim breaking. But as per usual with these wild mice, I still am able to enjoy the laterals on the hairpin turns and the zippy drops. It's a fine family coaster overall, but in a park loaded with great family coasters, as you'll see later in the video, it gets really buried in the lineup. Number 9, Jimmy Neutron's Atomic Flyer. This was my first time getting on the older generation Vacoma suspended family coaster before the company went on to use their new and improved track style. As is, I thought it was a very smooth and comfortable ride with the lap bar only vehicles. My only gripe is I thought Jimmy Neutron ran very tame, but I guess it's trying to appeal to a completely different audience, so it's not something I can really knock the ride for. Even so, I have to admit that I've ridden many Vacoma family inverts that have much more engaging layouts than this one. At number 8 is Bandit. Now, objectively, this could be one of the worst roller coasters in all of Europe if not the world, but I happened to get a decent ride on it in the very front row. If I were seated anywhere else on the train, I'm pretty sure it would have been a terrible ride. Even in the front, it was still pretty rough, but I still found some appreciation for the layout since I just love wooden coasters. But because of how poor of a reputation Bandit has, I think the best option for Movie Park going forward is to hire Rocky Mountain Construction to build Germany's first hybrid coaster. It would easily be the park's best attraction, but until then, Bandit is a pretty lackluster ride. Number 7 is Movie Park Express. I'll be honest, I've ridden many Vacoma SLCs that are far worse than this one. The only part I disliked with the passion was the turn leading out of the Immelman, but our friends gave us a heads up to brace for that, which made it not as bad. The rest of the layout at least did not feel too rough compared to other SLCs, but I still do wish it was given the comfortable vest restraints, because I think if that were done, Movie Park Express would have the potential to be a genuinely good coaster, to be honest. And at number 6 is High Fall. This is where the list really begins. High Fall is an older Intamin drop tower with a really unique stand up seating arrangement. I had previously ridden Agrophobia at Six Flags Over Georgia, which is the only drop tower like this that we have in the United States. Unfortunately, the one here doesn't have the tilt feature that Acrophobia has, but it is still fun between the punchy drop and rare seating arrangement. It's not a drop tower you have to prioritize when you visit Europe, but it's worth the ride if you're at the park. Number 5 is Excalibur, Secrets of the Dark Forest. Tucked away on the right side of the park, Excalibur is a River Rapids ride and one of my favorites in fact. Unlike many other River Rapids rides, this one does not excel in rapids or drops, but instead theming. The queue line is extensively well themed and the entire ride is as well. I was blown away by the rock work and geysers that kept this attraction super engaging. This is one that I definitely would not have ridden if I didn't have our local friends with us because I had no idea Excalibur was such an important part of the park. And it is hidden away, the entrance sign is kind of hard to find, but if you see Excalibur, then get in line. It's really fun. Number 4, Star Trek Operation Enterprise. This is many people's favorite ride at Movie Park Germany, but for me, this Mock Rides multi launch coaster fell a little bit short. I do enjoy the layout and its diverse array of forces, though. It's got a little bit of airtime, a little bit of laterals, and a lot of hang time. Perhaps I'd like it more if hang time was more up my alley. For being the park's most thrilling roller coaster, I guess I was just underwhelmed due to the unimpressive launches and lack of positive g-forces. It just felt really tame to me. It's a good coaster, just not a great one, I think my expectations were set a little too high going in. I actually walked away from Movie Park preferring two other roller coasters, including our number 3 spot, Van Helsing's Factory. Van Helsing's Factory is one of two indoor coasters that you can find at Movie Park, and the original one, opening in 2011. It's a really fun Gerslauer bobsled coaster, which for those of you who don't know is kind of like a modernized wild mouse with helixes and quick transitions. It's a great ride model for sure, and this one is likely one of my favorite Gerslauer bobsleds. The theming is very impressive, the ride layout packs in some super zippy elements, and it's even more enjoyable being that you're experiencing everything in the darkness. I only walked away with one ride on this coaster, so it's kind of a big blur by now, but I remember really liking it, so definitely give it a go when visiting the park. At number 2 is Area 51. This Shoot the Shoots ride was so close to making my number 1 spot, it actually was my number 1 in the park up until I wrote this script. 
Going in, I was expecting a couple drops in the darkness with maybe a little bit of theming, but nothing too far-fetched for this style of a ride. But I couldn't have been more wrong. Sure, you had the couple of drops I predicted, but both of them take place in the darkness and are divided by some incredibly well-themed dark ride moments. There's all these super cool extraterrestrial animatronics that are like scheming what's going on in Area 51. It is so cool. At one point, you start to hear a bunch of sirens, and when that happens, your boat flips around on a turntable and heads backwards through a literal flood scene. I was just blown away by my surroundings at, like, all times on this ride. If you had no plans to ride this before going to movie park, definitely make some time for it. Area 51 is probably the most surprising water ride that I rode in the entirety of our Europe trip. And coming in at number one is the Movie Park Studio Tour. This is the park's newest attraction opening in 2021, and if rides like this are the direction that Movie Park is heading, I can't wait to see what they do next. This is one of the most well-designed family coasters I've experienced between the theming and the layout and all of the coaster's many surprises. The ride model is an Intamin multi-dimension coaster, and this was the first one I rode. It totally seems like the model was introduced with theming in mind because the technology is great for a ride like this. It has slow moving dark ride scenes, launches where you're like racing a car, and then there's like turntable sections and so many props that take you behind the scenes in movies and filmmaking. The studio tour was an absolute joy to ride and I definitely recommend it. That said, a family coaster is a relatively weak standout attraction for this park, so as I stated, an RMC conversion of Bandit would change everything here. Movie Park's ride lineup would be dramatically improved, and the park would be put on the map for roller coaster enthusiasts around the globe. But as is, I would still recommend stopping by this place, even if it's just for a half day, as that should be enough time to check out all the park's best attractions. If you enjoyed this list, feel free to give me a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this to come in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.